We're talking tonight about how to be the best advocate for your child, especially if he or she has special needs. And we're introducing you to a former TV producer and music entrepreneur, Nicole Zeitzer Johnson. She never thought she would be taking on the world of neurological genetic science by storm, but um, that is exactly what's happened. She is the co-founder of the Fox G1 Research Foundation. And Nicole, this is so often how it happens. No one signs up for this, yet here you are embracing helping your child and trying to help others as well. Welcome to the show, Nicole. Thank you so much for having me, Amy. It's such a pleasure to be here. Oh, we appreciate you and everything you're doing. So, you. so how did this all start? How did you find out that the, this Fox G1 um, issue was happening with your little girl? Yeah, so um, because it's such a rare genetic disorder, it actually took us two years mm -hmm. to find Josie's diagnosis. Mm -hmm. So that was, a, as you can imagine, that was the most difficult two years, just not knowing why my little girl was not developing. Um, you know, month by month, she still wasn't sitting up, she wasn't crawling, she wasn't following, she wasn't tracking with her eyes, and then the seizure started. So um, through advances in genetic testing, we um, got her results through something called whole exome sequencing, where now, instead of looking for um, how the child presents, they can look at every single gene in the genome and you can find out what you have. Um, so we got the results. Um, she was two years old and we learned she has something called Fox G1 syndrome. It's a genetic disorder and we're not carriers. It's a fluke. Um, so it was pretty devastating sitting in that office and hearing everything that Josie won't do. Wow. Um, so Fox G1 is one of the first and most critical genes when it comes to brain development. Um, it provides blueprints for a protein that helps other genes switch on or off. And Nicole, I can't imagine for one thing, going two years looking for answers, maybe not knowing if you'd ever get them, and then, and then, as you say, sitting in that room and hearing, you know, what was happening and what it was going to be like. Yeah, I mean, that, I would say that that was the hard. The not knowing was the hardest part. Mm. Um, you know, there was a, there was a window of time from when I got the diagnosis till I finally, you know, came around and and said, okay, n now what are we going to do about this? because uh, it was just devastating. Um, the geneticist told us she will never talk, she will never walk. Um, he gave us a horrible prognosis for the lifespan, which I have since learned does not have to be the case. No. Um, and then, you know, it wasn't, you know, soon after, I started to say, you know, it's such a rare condition. How does he know? You know, how could he tell me what she will and will not do um, and sorry about that. That's um, all right. That's so true, though, because with something being that rare, you know, the doctors aren't in charge of a, of a child's lifespan. Um, and, and what you did is you became an advocate and you're teaching other mothers and fathers how to become almost private, like, investigators to, to figure these things out. So how else do you advocate um, we can help our children? Yeah, so that's a great question. So. Um, you know, we have to be the advocates for our children. And when you get this diagnosis and there's so little information out there, the first thing I think you have to do is you have to embrace your new job. And that is medical investigator. Yeah. So you, you will be the quarterback. You are the, you know, you are the private eye. You will um, really have to look at it from every single angle and get the best advice and then make your assessment based on everything, all the advice you get. And you know, so, oh, I'm sorry. No, that's okay, go ahead. I was just gonna say, so many times we feel like we're take, with healthcare today, we feel like we're taking up the doctor's time and he needs to move on to the next person. But you say, don't be afraid to ask a gazillion questions. That's right. Um, and parents really need to know this because you go to a doctor's office and very often you feel rushed you know, you feel maybe your question is, is not such a great question, but, you know, lose that thought. 
ask a gazillion questions. You know, your time there is is your time to do your job, right, as medical investigator. Mm -hmm. So there are no stupid questions. You know, very often doctors will speak in medical jargon and you don't understand it. So don't ever leave that office until it is perfectly clear to you. And ask follow-up questions. Just ask, ask, ask. It's, you know, do not be ashamed of your questions and make sure that you have your answers while you're there because your time is important. Yeah, and you also say do listen. It makes me wonder if the doctor would let you bring in a tape recorder so you can play it back later and really get all the nuances of what he's saying, all those those words that are so like so much like jargon to us. Yeah, so um, when I say listen, um, you know, especially if, if your child is newly diagnosed or whatever the case might be, very often parents are emotional, um, they're looking for an answer from the doctor and, and they're not really listening until they get that answer. But it's very important that you go in with an open mind, you listen, um, and not only listen to the medical professionals, but listen to your child. You know, for me, it's difficult because my child can't talk, mm. so I have to listen in other ways. But the most important information that the doctor is going to get is going to come from the parents and the child. So um, listening has many meanings. Right, when it's so rare, he should be listening to you too and maybe taking notes so other people can learn from it, right? Right, absolutely. And that's, you brought up something great, taking notes. So early on when, you know, it was, uh, everything was just so overwhelming for me. I would record my doctor's interviews. Yeah. So um, you can get an app. I used Evernote and I would record it. And very often I would go home and realize that I didn't hear some of what he was saying. So that's really important. I mean, take notes while you're there. I mean, make sure the doctor is hearing you. If you feel like he's doing something else while you're saying something that's very important, repeat yourself. You know, just make sure that they're taking everything into consideration. That's another point. Speak up. You're right. And it also says, I've got 30 seconds, um, but you say, trust your gut. A mom knows, right? Oh, yeah. A mom knows. I mean, and, and people will pull you in other directions. Trust your gut. It's as simple as that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So I want to tell our viewers, too, to go to your website because a couple more open up. Get your inner nerd on. Be interesting to hear that. And also, Nicole, you tell people, be kind to yourself. There is such a thing as caretaker fatigue. Um, boy, we really appreciate what you're doing, Nicole. Will you c keep us posted and come back? Absolutely. I would love to. Thanks okay. so much for having me. Nicole Zeitzer Johnson, FoxG1Research.org is the website. We'll see you real soon, Nicole. God bless you. Thank you.